Welcome to the JT Taylor Consulting Channel. This is going to be our demo of the Google Admin Console when you are signed up with the Google Workspace for Business. Doesn't matter if you're with the basic, standard, or business plus, or if you're with the inter enterprise uh, platform as well when working inside of Google Workspace, also, also Google Workspace for nonprofits, and also Google Workspace for education. This platform is the same with all of those uh, different options, and it will be a very easy and seamless way to manage your Google Workspace account in your administrative portal portal. We're going to go through each of these icons briefly in order to give you an overview of what each of these sections of the admin portal allows you to do. First off, as you can see here, you see my logo and I am signed in under my business account as the admin. I use my username and also the same email address for my administrative console. When you sign up for your Google Workspace account, you will have the option to decide which email address you're going to use as your console's sign in. It does not have to be the same as the leader of the organization or anybody in IT. It could be a general email address that is associated with your administrative login. It is up to you how you decide to do that. I decided to use myself as the login for the administrative council of my business, JT Taylor Consulting. So, we're going to start here with the dashboard. There's not much with the dashboard. As you can see, the dashboard is where you're going to see relevant uh, insights about your organization. Being that I am the only user currently in the organization, there are no insights uh, that are popping up here on this particular page. Let's go back to admin. So as you just saw, when I click on a particular icon or particular tab, all I have to do is click on the admin area to go back to this particular section on the console to get to where I need to go. Let's start with users. Your user section is where you're going to spend a good amount of your time. This is where everybody in your organization is going to be created whether it be um, all of your users will be created in this section. You do that by simply clicking on add new users. You also have bulk update of users and you also have download users. And in your more section, you have manage custom attributes and you also have transfer tool for unmanaged users. Let's simply start with adding a new user. Adding a new user is a process where you're gonna take individuals that are not on your user console and you're gonna put them in the console as a user so they can use the Google for Workspace in their own personal Google inbox. So to add a new user, you're going to simply click new user and this screen is going to pop up. As you can see with the new user, I can also add an image. So if you have images of your users or icon that you want to use of your users, you can simply click on here and you can upload what you want to do. First name, last name, user's primary email address. So with the user primary email address, what's going to happen is you're going to simply put 
the person's first name. We're going to put my first name here. And we're going to put my last name. Once I do that, as you can see, it auto-populated what my you what my email address can be. It's a suggestion. You don't have to use that. I can simply just delete this and put dot Taylor. Depending on what your organization prefers will determine what you want to use for your email address. You auto populate it. You have a secondary email. You also have phone numbers that you can put, whether it be a personal or a business line, you can put that there. Also on here, it says automatically generate a password. It's going to automatically generate a password for that user. So when they go to log in, you will provide them with that password. If not, I can click ask for a password change at the next sign in. Okay. That's how I could do that. That's how we add a user. Now we have a user already signed up here and I can click on my user. Once the user is active, as you can see, it says active. It tells me the last time I've signed in and you'll be able to see this for each one of your users when you have all of them inside of your portal console. You can reset user's password. You can rename your user. You can add users to groups. You can email your user, restore data, change a user's organizational unit. Also up here it says mail storage, drive storage, and docs owned. This user, myself particularly, I own 113 documents. Also, it talks about security, two-step verification. I can turn that on and off. My applications that I'm connected with, 22 applications currently. What groups I'm in, what my role is, and we'll go in-depth with that later on in more videos. But admin roles and privileges, currently I am the super admin. I have 69 admin or console privileges and 34 admin API privileges. Apps, I have 67 or 69 that are available to me. Other cloud apps, I have one other cloud app for me. So as you can see, this is a very detailed portal that shows you what each user capabilities are within your organization. Once again, we're going to click on admin to go back to this console. The next is groups. Groups is an area where when you have a particular set of individuals, whether it be, let's say in the education field, you have a group of students, we have a group of teachers, or let's say if it's in the business world and you have a team that you want to create a group for. This is where you would create a group inside of your organizational unit, the name of the group, the description of the group, a group email, and then group owners. And you can search for them here, and then you can go and create an actual group. We're not going to create a group today. In the next step, you will create your group settings. Go back here. Organizational unit. Add, remove, rename, move, or search for organizational unit. Currently, an organizational unit is JT Taylor Consulting. What are organizational units? Within JT Taylor Consulting, there may be another department. Maybe it's our creative design department. That could be another organizational unit that I can create underneath JT Taylor Consulting. So look, think of organizational units as different departments within your main organizational unit. I can name my organizational unit here, get a description, and as you can see faintly, it says parent organizational unit. So JT Taylor Consulting would be the parent organizational unit. I can also change that if I had other organizational units here but I don't have any other organization units. So JT Taylor Consulting will be the default organizational unit or the parent organizational unit until I create other organizational units. 
Buildings and Resources. Under the Buildings and Resource tab, I'm able to manage and create resources. Examples of that are meeting rooms or different products or equipment that I need to lease out or sign out for different meetings or events. Okay, so resource here. I can add once again if I'm an organizational unit and I have different buildings throughout the city or I have a building with different floors that do different things. I can create a building and I can create each a floor has its own is its own resource. The same thing with uh, equipment. If I have a projector, if I have a jam board, if I have um, a fax machine, a copier, things that may be mobile that can go and move different places that may need to be checked out for a particular group, I can also use this to create those different things. As you can see here, it gives me some examples like a conference room. Here, I can create this organizational or this resource within my organization. It gives me categories, other resources, like I said, projectors or a vehicle, a meeting space, room, phone booth. And this is very good because it can integrate and show up on your calendars so individuals know what is available when they go to schedule different things. We'll go back to administrative devices. Here in devices, this is where you're going to manage all your organizational devices. Okay, your mobile devices, your endpoints, your Chrome devices, um, manage browsers, your Google Meet hardware, whether it be videos and different things like that, uh, phones, your Jamboard devices, devices that you're using to create different projects with. So all these devices will be managed in the devices management platform. This is where you're able to see what you have, manage what you have, and keep an eye out on what you have. Apps, all the apps that are associated with Google Workspace. Here we go, your calendar, Google Cloud, you have Google Meets, Google Chat, Google Voice, Google Groups for Business, your Jamboard, Keep, Sites, Task, okay? In here is where you're able to also turn on and off your apps. Let's go to calendar. Here it says right now it's turned on for everyone. If I wanted to turn this calendar off, I can turn it off for everyone. I can also, if I had groups, I can turn it off and on for particular groups. If I had different organizational units, I can turn it on and off for different organizational units okay so just understand that in here in the app section you're able to control what your each app does because everybody in your organization or everybody in certain groups may not need permission to use every single app so in here you're able to control that in the app section your security set section comes standard but are, if there is different things you want to do inside of your security session, like login challenges, um, SSO, advanced protection program, contact awareness access, Google Cloud session control, all these things are in here. Password management, data protection, and different rules, and your alert center. So this is where you will keep all the security features and settings change them as necessary. They already come with preset security features um, that Google puts in place that are very strong and very um, secure. Sometimes you may need a little bit more. Sometimes you may want to a little bit less secure. Reports. In reports, this is where you're going to see everything that's going on in your organization, the storage that's being used, how files are shared externally. Currently, I have 22 files that are shared externally, and it kind of gives you 
when and where they're shared exchangely part of the month outside domain anyone with the link public so it gives you an idea of what your organization and the people in your organization who they're sharing their information with how often they're sharing their information and when that information is being shared um, the most and what part of that information what kind of information is being shared the most this is what users activity in different apps um, since I'm the only one in this organization at the time um, it's going to show just me but when you have several people within your organization you will be able to see everything that's in here drive meet hangouts calendar and classroom as you can see classroom there is no usage no activity um, because currently i don't use classroom so there is no activity right now activity in cloud search i don't have any active users i'm not currently using cloud search so right now i'm on zero for all of those currents post the same thing so this is a very good tool to see how your organization and the individuals inside of your organization are using the Google Workspace platform effectively. Billing is where you will find all of your billing. The subscriptions that you may have. Um, right here you see I have Google Workspace and I also have Google Voice. It's going to tell you how many licenses you have assigned, the plan, and then here you will be able to see your payment transactions. Account settings. Here I'm going to be able to update information. As you can see, my primary administrative email, my customer ID number, and then the name of my organization. Here I'm able to put my logo, my location, compliance, and different things like that. Everything about my organization. Admin roles. These are all the admin roles. You have a super admin, group admins, group readers, group editors, user admin, help desk, service admin, mobile admin, and so on. So here you're able to assign different admin roles to different people. So if I wanted to assign a role, I would go here and then I would assign users. And then I will give them that particular role that they would need, depending on who needs what. Manage your domains. Here's all the domains within my organization. I have currently one domain. If I needed to add a domain, say my organization has several different domains, I can, or we own several different domains, I could add these domains to this site and manage them inside of my Google admin console. Data migration is big for a lot of companies. Data migration is import of data over to your Google workspace. So if you have a lot of data, you're with a couple legacy programs or you're using a different platform and you're moving over to Google workspace, um, this is where we will help move all that information over to Google so you're not going to lose any of your information. And of course, this is support. Talk to our support team. Here, you're going to click on there. This is going to pop up. And right here, all the things are going to be shown um, that you need to contact a Google help and give you ability to use and get things done thank you for watching this tutorial about the google admin consoles platform we look forward to speaking with you if you have any questions leave a comment in the chat or simply email us subscribe to our channel as we help you provide solutions and achieving results